So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to talk about how chat GPT can really help you get more done and grow your brand. However, it's a tool. Okay. There was this interview with Tony Robbins. It was the first, um, it was Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia has an actual robot that's considered to be one of their citizens. It's the world's first citizen robot. And Tony Robbins is literally having a full on conversation with this robot. And there was something really, it freaked me out when I first saw it. And this is two and a half years ago. You guys will have to look it up. Just go to YouTube, Tony Robon, Tony Robot, Robot. I'm trying to say Robot and Robbins at the same time. Robons, <laughs> Tony Robbins talking to this robot. And it'll, it'll freak you out a little bit. At least it did for me. I don't know for you. This is two and a half years old. And so it's just amazing what it's been able to do since that time. But one thing that the robot said was, we are the moon. We say the moon has light, but it, the moon really doesn't have light. Moon is reflecting the light from the sun. And I was like, wow, that's a really sophisticated answer. And so essentially what the robot was saying is the technology can only reflect what light it's being given. And the light comes from you. Okay, whatever you're giving that robot is what that robot's going to spit out. It's going to reflect everything who you are. And so now we start to get into the personal branding, right? And why branding is so important. And branding really, all branding really is, is being more of who you are and less of who you're not. Being more of who you are and making sure, or this would be your goal, making sure that that identity and who you are is being reflected through other people's perceptions of you. Okay. That's all really branding is, you know, when people talk about branding, they talk about logos and graphics and colors and what's my catchphrase and, and all these different things. And not to say that that's not important. Okay. Because it is important, but really the brand is what are the most important messages that are near and dear to your heart? Okay. What's your, what do you believe the purpose of life is? What's your identity? What's your story? right? So these are all the things that are important. What, and so now when we start to access these tools now coming from our brand and we filter everything through the brand, now we're going to be able to put out some really good, meaningful content that doesn't just look like a robot did it. Okay. So what you got, so the main takeaway, I hope you're taking away is information is everywhere. And if I'm really going to be next gen, and when I say next gen, be innovative, be unique, be different in the workplace, okay, and be seen and be heard, then we can't just compete with information, okay? Information, and I'm not saying, you know, someone accused me of being Hitler before they're like, oh, I saw you burning a book, you're Hitler. It's not that I don't believe in information, okay, but I believe that we have a over- um, need for information and it leaves us stuck. And when we're breaking down like human mo when we're breaking down human behavior, right? And human behavior, how would you define human behavior? Okay. Human behavior is essentially how we behave. Okay. And so if we're to tap into human behavior, okay, we got to understand how humans are programmed from the from the get-go. Okay, so I talk a lot about the mind in two main parts, the conscious and the unconscious. Okay, and if you look at the conscious mind, how would you define conscious? If we were to define conscious, how would we define that? Jacqueline, what, how would we, what, what's one word we'd put for conscious? Aware. Aware. Yep, that's a good word. The aware brain. Okay, so the aware brain, the conscious brain is responsible for five, less than 5% of our actions. Okay, the unconscious and subconscious, 
is responsible. So let's break those words down. Sub means below submarine, below the water, right? So sub, subconscious means below our awareness. Okay. Unconscious means not aware. Okay. So the unconscious and the subconscious is responsible for 95% of our human behaviors. So when we're looking at influence and we're looking at persuading people, because you guys all have a business, right? You believe in your business. You've experienced some crap, some messes. You went and did some things. You messed up again. And finally, you found something and it helped you and you grow. And now you want to share this to other people, right? And so if we really want to influence people, okay, to, to buy our services, buy our products, then we got to learn how to talk to that subconscious and that unconscious mind, okay? And if you're looking at how each part of the brain is influenced, let me draw a picture here. I love drawing pictures because it really helps us understand things. So I'm just going to share my screen real quick, okay? So we got, oops, wrong one. So we got our conscious and subconscious, okay? And so the conscious, again, is our aware mind, okay? And our subconscious, okay? And then unconscious is essentially down here. Like there's things that my, my son's two and a half, you know, there's things, there's a lot of things that my son experienced that his body remembers, but he will never consciously remember, okay? I mean, how I was asking Alan this the other day, what's your earliest memory? Okay, how old were you? Well, I was two or I was three or I was four. Well, look at how many experiences you've experienced that you have no recollection of, right? So it's deep here in the, in the unconscious, okay? So when we're breaking down our behavior, okay, 5% of actions come from the conscious, 95% come from the unconscious, Okay. And people say, no way, no way is it that little has come from the conscious. And I say, oh yes way. And there's multiple studies to prove that even some studies that show as little as 1% of your actions come from your conscious mind. Okay. So you got to realize you are a, you are a unconscious being. Okay. So now the question is how do we influence each parts of these minds? Okay. Conscious Aware mind is based upon logic, okay? It's based upon data, okay? And it's based upon information. The subconscious, okay, is based upon emotion. It's based upon feeling. And it's based upon sensory, okay? touch, taste, all these different things. And so when, when we're starting to use robots like chat GPT and we're leaning on all of it to do our work and we're using it as our main thing to influence people, we're going to have a really hard time. It's going to be less than 5% chance likely. And I didn't really get this when I first started in business. You know, in business, I think I believed what a lot of people believe is if you're good, people will just come. If you know your shit, people will know you know your shit and they'll want to hire you. And so I first started business as a personal trainer and I went out and got all the certifications. I was going to school. I was reading all the articles. Um, I was always going to different trainings, learning from the best. And it became very frustrating because here I am learning all these different things and studying all these different um, exercise nerd shit is how I would explain it now. Like, you know, I began to get frustrated because I didn't feel like I was making the money I should be with how many certifications and having a degree and all these different accolades. And I thought, why don't people listen to me? I'm telling them exactly what they need to do. And so, and that's how I let it because my belief, my internal belief was if you know your stuff, people will hire you. Okay. And so as time went on, I began to get more frustrating and early on, I knew I wanted to go into speaking. I was influenced at a young age with my mom speaking, uh, read a book about, it was a really elementary book and the author was um, a speaker. 
And I thought, man, that would be really cool. And so I hired a mentor and he said, hey, you should really go up to the National Speakers Association. You could probably learn a lot there if you really want to be a speaker. So um, so I just became a student in that, you know, in, in speaking. Because the last time I spoke, I offered a $19 program to 100 people and one person bought it. And it was frustrating because I told them all the science of it, all these things I was going to customize. I mean, it was so much work and I couldn't believe. And so I'm up at the National Speakers Association and, you know, I, I didn't really know what to expect. But one of the common things that you heard early on is your story is really what's going to influence people. Okay. Your experiences and everything that you've went through is really what's going to persuade people. So now when we go back to what we're talking about here, okay, it makes sense. A story influences the subconscious and unconscious information influences the conscious. So if we're looking at, again, how we make decisions, how we make decisions is first we fill an emotion. Oh my gosh, that would be so cool having that new car, driving with the top down, sunny outside, blasting my Will Smith jam, Wild Wild West. That was my jam back in the day. Okay. So you envision this emotion and almost like this like a story. We visualize in stories. And then after we get stuck on this emotion, okay, now we look for the logic to make it right. The question I asked the client the other day is, what's the difference between an excuse and a reason? What's the difference between an excuse and a reason? Okay. All excuses are is reasons. I don't have enough time. Well, I don't have enough money. Well, I don't like, and, and usually it's not really the truth of the logic. It's just the emotion that we're feeling. And we look for the logic to make it true. I don't have enough time. What you're really saying is I'm really overwhelmed with what's on my plate at this moment in time. And I have a hard time getting things done as they currently are. So the logic I look to is, I don't have enough time. Okay. Ooh, a steak sounds really good. Okay. Logically, we think, oh, that steak sounds good. Well, why does it sound good? It's because our microbiome and all the bacteria in our guts, which is actually, they say, according to scientists, considered the second brain. Okay. They say, go with your gut feeling, right? Okay. And so we have this feeling. And then we search for the logic. So you got to understand that's just how we're programmed. So we're going to be talking about here in a second, how to use chat GPT, because all chat GPT is really one, it's going to reflect who you are. Okay. Two, it's going to lead from logic. Okay. And then the last one is we're over the information age is over with. Okay. It's not about if the information is right. It's about, is there emotion to those words? Is there experience behind those words? The person I'm listening to across the screen, do I even like them to begin with? And if you don't like somebody or someone doesn't like you, what you could be saying is like, truer than true, and I'm sure you guys have all had this experience, is they just won't listen to you. Who knows what I'm talking about? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Okay. And so it's a frustrating. So we're going to be talking about that um, here in just a second. So before we move on, you know, I always like to hear what you guys are taking away. Um, Jacqueline, what are some of your takeaways that you're taking away so far as we're talking about this? Um. I'm trying to see from my standpoint how that would fit into my model because right now rebranding and remodeling and um, every client wants something different. So I'm kind of hesitant because as you know, I'm kind of the control freak right now trying to grow the business, but having a hard time designated 
designating other positions to to thrive okay. instead of taking it all on myself. So I always feel like eh, AI. I don't know. I, I I guess I just don't know what I don't know. Yeah, and to be honest, and sure, yeah, and we'll get into some of that nitty gritty. And there's lots of there's lots of little tactics. We're gonna go over kind of the macro view of of how it works. Um, and everything we'll start to lay out some posts, but a quick answer to your question, you know, is everything should be flowing through you. And that means your messages. Here's the common thing I hear from business owners. Well, you can't trust people. I can't trust people to do good work. It's not that you can't trust people. It's just, you don't currently at this moment in time, trust yourself enough that you have the influence that you actually would want to have in order to say something to somebody and then actually follow through in the way that you would identify that is actually being following through and doing a good job, right? And so it still becomes up to you. Everything should, all the messages should be flowing through you. So now it's, it's coming from you. So as, as a quick example, you know, when I was a nutritionist, I'd always get uh, clients text me, Travis, is this good food? Should I eat this? Should I not eat this? Yes, no, maybe so. One, uh, one girl messaged me and she said, can I have in and out? That was her question. And I said, yes, that's okay, but not all the time though. But I didn't say that when I reached, when I looked back at my phone, I said, not all the time, ho. And I was like, oh, <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> just, my, just called my client a ho. She, she knew my heart. She knew I wouldn't ever call her a ho. Um, and she just said, she's like, that's funny. And so, like I was saying, like, that's technology though, right? Like, it's not going to always interpret what I want it to be. But what I realized is how many times I have to answer all these one-off questions. And so I began to give my clients a philosophy. Here's the nutrition philosophy. I want you to eat like you're a caveman. That If this food doesn't exist in the last 100 years, I want you to say no to it. And next to that, if you're determining which food is better, this sour cream or this sour cream, usually the sour cream with less ingredients is going to be your healthier choice. So I began to give, give them a philosophy. I started to teach other nutritionists. I gave them a philosophy. So now I'm influencing people. I don't even know because I was able to teach someone to some teach something to somebody and that somebody was able to teach the next person because I started to create a philosophy, AKA messages, AKA brand. A brand is essentially a philosophy. Okay. We were, we were talking about this the other day. Um, you know, how people go to church and the church says, here's the commandments, right? But everyone interprets that commandment and they put it up to their own standard. Okay. We all have different levels of standard, like a church might say no caffeine, right? But that might, for some person, their standard is I can drink Coca-Cola because that's okay. I'm just going to say no to coffee. Right. And so we kind of create these own standards, not that it's a good or bad thing. It's just how we're programmed. Right. And so at the end of the day, you got to understand you have your own philosophy. Okay. You have your own standards. And the more you're clear about the standards in your philosophy, the more we can start to use technology to do our work. Okay. Does that make sense, Jack? Does that, I know that doesn't really answer your question and we'll get more into it. Um, I'm getting it. Joel, what, what's some of your takeaways? Well, I'm after the meat and potatoes. <laughs> meat and potatoes. What are you taking away so far, though? Well, I mean, it's it's a good introduction of what uh, about the conscious and subconscious mind and how to work with people. But what I'm really looking for is how we're going to use uh, Chat GPT, according uh, like like Jacqueline. I've had I've dabbled with it, but I just want to see on the spin or the techniques you guys are going to bring to the table is what mm -hmm. I'm looking for. We'll we'll get to the meat and potatoes, but understand the appetizer is just as important. And the reason why I'm talking about this stuff is because if if we don't start talking, we do, if we don't start having this conversation now, mm -hmm. we start using the tool in not way the tool's been intended, mm -hmm. and then we say, "Oh, well, the tool doesn't work." No, you don't work, and the way that you don't work is you don't understand how to really use the tool. 
Okay. Because like Zach was saying, AI is going to be really, really powerful. But if you're not using the tool correctly, you're going to sound like everyone else. You're going to be doing what everyone else is. And you're going to be looked over just because you're trying to lead from that informational basis. So we'll, we'll get to the meat and potatoes um, as far as everything goes. Nikolai, what's one of your uh, what, one of your takeaways so far? Well, if we translate it into AI, uh, the mean is... Uh... It's not what it can do, it's what you are requesting it to do. So basically, whatever it will uh, make is based on your personality of your philosophy. And uh, so my main uh, takeaway is, uh, is just an automation tool. Uh, you still have to focus on your philosophy and your culture and uh, discover who you are. Yeah. Because what, what I want to do, okay, and we'll get into this in a little bit as Joel wants to, like if you're using it to write your entire article, I, I, I don't know. That just doesn't seem very authentic to me. I don't know how you feel about it, but more importantly is it's just going to get looked over, okay? It's, I, I, I met this one lady and she said uh, she had this book and she's like, she wrote this book. She's like, I don't even like this book. And I was like, well, why don't, why don't you like your book? I mean, you wrote it. And she goes, I actually didn't write the book. I kind of just handed it off to someone else and they wrote it for me. Right. And so not that that's a good or bad thing, but you're going to feel so much better about the things you create. If again, you flow it through you and your brand and your messages. Okay. So any other comments or questions before we move on to it? Zach, anything you want to add to the conversation? Um, Alan, go ahead. Or, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Alan. You didn't mute the button quite yet. There we go. Um, what, what I've taken away so far just reinforces the idea that uh, the, the mind is like it's like a computer in a way because the uh, the programming that we do now is so different than the the ones and the zeros that was, is what the underlying com computations are we don't ever get into that that's kind of the subconscious of the uh, of the computer but it determines what the computer will do and so uh the, even though we can program it to do things even the cptg or the cpg is not a is not true programming if you want to if you want to call it it's like the top just skimming off the top and all the subconscious stuff is what's doing all the work and uh if if we try to operate outside of those parameters it, it doesn't it doesn't work and so the human mind when if you're trying if you feel like you've got a message that will benefit others you've got to package it in a way that will uh appeal to them in a way so that when they I mean, everything we do whether we buy a pair of shoes or a car or spend our time with a certain person it all goes on a scale it all goes on a scale if someone says they don't have the time or they don't have the money what they're saying is i don't see the value in spending my time or my money on what you're showing me so unless you can package it in a way that they go okay i'm willing to sacrifice something else that's not as important as this now and i will i will invest the time i will invest the money i'll invest whatever is necessary because i can see the value that i'm going to get from it and so even though your your message may be legitimate if it's not packaged in a way that they can clearly put it on the scale and go okay yeah i'm going to shift some of that time and that money that i had maybe thought about saving for something else and i'm going to invest it here that's that's our goal that's what we've got to do with our branding and and then the way we package it uh it, our programs and so on so that our message does have a, actually a chance to get to them and and work with their subconscious mind all that programming that's down there that then the logic will back all that up and we'll say you know like you say a reason to not do something is no different than a reason to do something mm -hmm. it's just the logic that it backs up what's really making us tick the way we think the way we operate subconsciously is what runs the show 
Yep. That's my takeaway so far. Yep. Good takeaway. Yeah. Well, very, very well said. And like my son, he's like, he's two and a half. He's an, he's more of an animal than he is a human. Like it's when I put him in timeout, like, and, and I'm taught and I go to talk to him after I put him in timeout. I, 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 what is he actually taking away? He's, he's taking away. How do I feel at that moment in time? And so it's been very interesting, but anyways, going back to what you're saying, I, there was this personal trainer years ago he broke down the math dollar for dollar. If this person stopped drinking coffee and stopped smoking cigarettes, it could not only pay for his personal training, but then pay for extra food that he said was going to be expensive. He broke it down dollar for dollar and he came in the room and he was so pissed. He's like, I shit you not. I broke it down dollar for dollar. And the guy still said no. Right. And it just goes back to what we're saying. Well, because that's it's even though on paper, that's a logical data decision. The emotion of having to give that up, like what's the emotion? What's the feeling? Why is it why there's a block? So that's a whole other conversation. So coming up with the logic that backs it up is their job. It's not yours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, yeah. And I would like to say one thing is uh, something that I think. It's very important too. Is like this chat TPT is 24 seven. I mean, we all have to sleep. We all have to do those things. Chat 24, like chat GPT is like 24 seven. It can have customer service. It can sales and marketing for you. Listen to customers with their feedback. Uh, I mean, it's 24 seven and it can give feedback to your customers and different things. So it's pretty crazy. And I, I just think that like, you know, we have to sleep like, it can't we can't beat it we have to use it we need to incorporate it yep no okay let's uh let's jump into it so first of all what you want to do i'm going to share my screen is i would go to google and then i would just type in chat gpt okay um this is the one i went with okay Click here, they have a paid version and a free version. I think I have the paid version on my phone. I was going to talk to Zach. I don't know how to get the paid version on my desktop. I have it on my phone though. So the free, ver obviously free version is free. Paid version is $20 a month. So I don't know. I'm going to try it out and see if it's worth the $20. It would have to be really, really shitty though, not to be worth the $20 because, you know, what's my time worth at the end of the day? Right. And so is the $19 worth, you know, an hour of my time over the course of month? Okay. That's not the question. The question is how many hours. And so if it's saving me a couple hours, I was like, yeah, that could be worth it. So go there. Okay. Sign in. Who is signed in at this current moment in time? Okay. So go ahead and sign in if you want to, or if not, you can just watch, you know, as we go through this. Okay. Um, Zach, are there any other ones that you've tried or have you just mostly been using chat GPT? Uh, I tried the Bing one a little bit. It's kind of a little different, but yeah, no, this is about the main one that I've used. So this is one okay. I like so far. So, okay. Yep. And so it's just, it's, it's going to take time with it. And so again, what I'm going to use it for is again, backing up my experiences backing up the emotion right so i'm looking for what's the logic of what i just said and so now we start to just type out general questions okay so for jacqueline why is having a virtual assistant important for scaling for growing your business Okay, so now it starts to break everything. Having a virtual semi current important time management. Holy cow! Cost effective hiring a <laughs> virtual assistant. You just made my day. Okay. Oh, we're just getting started. This is, really? uh, and I'm just getting started. Like by no means, yep. let me tell you I'm the expert. I'm just telling you how to use this tool in a combination with your brand. Um, you know, and what's more important than information? It's questions mm -hmm. and questions come from your brand. Your brand asks questions because questions lead to conversation. So now after it types all this out, okay, um, I'm going to now kind of put more of my brand into it. So 
if it was me, say the same thing only in a very real, raw, and blunt way. Well, with All right, here's the deal. <laughs> You're busy. <laughs> You're gonna have a lot of shit to do. And let's be real. <laughs> Somebody to hire an employee. <laughs> I'm sold. Honestly, it's about the questions you ask and how you like, yeah. like describe it. Like if you, you know, that's how. That's what I've found is your questions have to be really like good and and I uh, just. I have a note if you guys, uh, I'm actually just spoke before the, the training. So I had a business book idea for the longest time and I was like, hey, like, basically I tried to talk to Jeff G GTP as a person. I was like, hey, what questions I need to ask you or what will be the best way to work with you to create that and that and that. And it actually gives you like just comprehensive. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's like a person talk to you. It's That's cool. Mind blowing. Nikolai asked the question of all questions. What's the question I should be asking? <laughs> That's a really smart question. Yeah, that is. I didn't even think of that. There's yeah. so many different things, ways to look at it. It's crazy. Yeah. Okay, so say the same thing. Now bullet point it. Okay, so now it's bullet pointing it. So now also like I can either ask it another question or what I've been doing is essentially I'll copy it. And you look at the profile because you can always look at the profile whether it's okay. like the one guy is in the army. I'm talking here. Colleen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's my grandma, by the way. That's funny. I'm going to give her some crap later for that. <laughs> She's on my mom's side. Yeah. She's uh, so sweet for jumping on here. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, so now copy this. So let's say I decide to go with something like this. So now I want to go over to my Google Drive. Okay. And this is something that is going to be more time consuming up front. But in order to really scale and grow your business, you're going to have to have things that are easily duplicatable and easy to access. Okay. So I'm going to go to my back end. So this is my master. So this has all my back end stuff, videos, contracts, everything. And so I have a tab called marketing. Okay. Travis's posts. So I'm building specific post and so i'll go to a doc okay and then i'll name it benefits why hire a va okay so then i'll copy and i'll paste that there why is it showing that i don't want any of that okay all right here's the deal as your business grows you have to do a lot of shit to do and let's be real, you don't have the time or money to hire a full employer for every little thing. That's that's where a virtual assistant come on. They could take a lot of your mundane tasks you don't want to deal with. And you don't need to fry with them off space of sure. So now I start like, do I want to break it up here? Okay. Do I want to bold this here? Okay. Do I want to add more of my my personality into it? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's kind of how, how I've been using that part of it so far. So let's go back here. Okay. So who else do we got on here? So, uh, we got Nikolai does solar. Okay. Um, what would be a good question? What, what would be a good question for Nikolai to ask? So first I'd start with something general is how many houses in the USA have solar. And I guess the cutoff date is they're saying it will remember thing up to September 21st. Okay, so starting to go into a lot of the analytical data, okay, of it. Now, 
now again, to go to the next level, we just got to ask a certain question or we got to put it in a more so say that same thing in a more casual conversative way. And I won't. Conversative, isn't that a word? We'll just put conversation. Why do people get solar panels on their house in the first place? Okay, how much does solar cost, right? So we're getting into all these things, okay? Um, let's say we're doing a Facebook group. So we're like, man, I need to, Travis told me I need to post every single day. Do four separate Facebook posts about health and fitness. Stop generating. Okay. Da, da, da. Okay. So we can go into that. And so even to let, let's go back to that real quick. So now you could say, write a sales copy of all those points. Looking to save money on your electric bills and reduce your carbon footprint, installing solar panels on your home could be the solution you're looking for. Here are just a few of the many benefits. I'm so, so excited. You have no idea. Starts writing so, all for me. so this isn't like a, a chat AI bot on your website. <clears throat> this is something that you use to ask questions and post in a like like you did a, either bullet points or reasons, etc. Mm -hmm. And that we take that and we produce that into social media posts or a sales flyer or yep. email. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you the big picture here in just a second. So we're getting into the kind of the nitty ditty micro right now of everything. And I'm going to show you how you could take this because just knowing this is like I was saying, just this won't isn't going to do it for you. But back to what Zach said just a second ago, too, is, I mean, you'll have these things on your website. So when someone goes to your website at 3 a.m., they're able to have a conversation. How far are we, we away from that technology, Zach, do you think? I, I see people already trying to do it. Really? There's already people trying to incorporate it. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't even know about the upgrade to plus I chat GPT is already like going to different places. Like Bing is already incorporating them. Like, I think that you can be able to put it on your website, not in the near future, honestly. I mean, don't see it taking long because it's growing so fast already. It's growing right now. Like it's teaching itself right now. And then once you get it on your website, I think like it'll be more personalized to you and it'll know you better because it'll have all your information on your website and then it'll answer questions for you. It'll be, I just, I, I think it's gonna be amazing. Honestly, it's gonna be crazy. Yeah. I mean, think about how it just learned in the time I was here. I mean, look at a really basic conversation now developed into a sales script. Does that make sense? Yeah. And on the left there, all your new chats, like you can start a new chat completely that'll keep those in order to so like how you ask them so i have like 50 or 60 of them so okay. if you push new chat that'll so it'll separate it you'll start a new chat and that way you can kind of keep it a little more organized and just for me that's what i've been doing but um yeah i i cool. is awesome yeah those are some good tips um hey travis yeah, yeah. is is there does it will it uh bring up any kind of imagery or video or anything like that can you because a lot of verbiage on the post sometimes is kind of it doesn't catch someone's eye like it could have had an image with it is it offer yeah. something like that um i think there's others other things out there that um i mean remember a couple of months ago when everyone was doing their ai characters <laughs> right you'd send it a bunch of photos and it kick out all these ai themes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um 
you know, and, and all, and that's a good question. That's kind of what we're going to be transitioned to is, okay, well, what about pitchers? Cause yeah, if we just have a thing full of words, like that's very easy to overlook, mm-hmm. right? Again, you got to understand the visual component of it. How long do you have to capture someone's attention? Mm-hmm. It's like a quarter of a second now, <laughs> right? It's like, it's, yeah. yeah, they say when the internet first started, you had like seven minutes. Now we're down to a quarter of a second. And so that's just, the, how the brain's been trained, right? The phone mm-hmm. is essentially training us. Like people talk about like robots are going to eventually take over. I mean, how far are we from that right now? I mean, let's be we honest. kind of have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's be honest just a little bit. Okay. Um, so another industry. So now that we talk about um, like for us, we have a business retreat coming on. So uh, right uh article about how much fun business retreats are okay here's some reasons change of scenery Okay, so it's going into all the little details of it. And so for this post, okay, and I'm going to look at it here in just a second um, and see what it kind of types out. So business. uh, I like the word bluntly. It tends to be some words I would like. (laughs) Like Uh, swear words? (laughs) Does it swear? Does it do swear words? Yes. Yeah. It does do swear words? Yes. Okay. (laughs) With a few swear words. (laughs) It will. What? It did do. It said. I was swearing earlier. It was yeah, swearing with something you said earlier. Yeah, it literally <laughs> just swore to me. You had mine right here. That's what. Well, lies. your robot That's was lies. raised by the same standards mine was, Zach. Okay, well, I don't know you very well then. <laughs> <laughs> we call them sentence enhancers. I'm using the wrong language. It's okay. true. You do the same post said mm-hmm. more bluntly. Okay, so I'm going to go back up to here, okay, and I'm going to change my post here just because I'm doing different posts. So business retreats. Okay, we got two of these planned this year. So first, okay, I'm going to start with what would be a good picture or a video. That's kind of, that's kind of where I start sometimes. Okay, and so I have a cool video from the last time that we went out. I wonder if I still have it saved on here. Okay, and so I'll pull it up on YouTube here in a second. So that's kind of where I want to first look at what's going to grab their attention. So if we're going with something emotional, okay, how how can I grab their attention? I'll find Facebook here in a second. Hey, Travis? Yeah. There are there are uh, softwares that generate like cartoon images, and some of them are, are like whiteboard, you know, writing and stuff like that, which gives it more of a personal feel than just written text, and it comes across as video. And what you may have to you may have to copy and paste that in, or read this copy as you're using your voice with the uh, the animated software. I've done that before. I've made animated videos with my voice and you know they act and do the stuff you command them to do i'm sure it's more sophisticated now than it was when i did it but you might be able to use these tools together to create something too yeah i did ask it uh that question and it said that it could direct you to uh search engines to help you with that and generating images and different Mm -hmm. things so you can ask it 
and it will do that for you. So help you with that anyways. Okay. Yeah. But we'll come, we'll come back to the video here in a second. So the first thing that I have, so I have my picture and my video. So the first thing I start my post with is what's called the hook. Okay. What's a hook. Who's ever heard that before? They use it in music. Yeah. Music. So <laughs> hook is essentially, essentially how do I grab their attention? Okay. And usually the best way to grab someone's attention is through a very direct saying or a question. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you had a business retreat, Jacqueline, what would be the first question you would ask someone? Um, about their team and their needs okay. for hiring a VA, whether it's minimal, large okay. scale. Yeah. Yep. So for me, so for me with this business retreat, you know, all our events are very structured. The business retreat is a very casual, come get to know people. Um, and I give everyone one rule, come in, ask questions and find out how to help someone while you're on this trip. So it's an awesome environment. So the hook that I would probably start with is, aren't you ready for a vacation? It's huh, a good one. Come on. You know, you need it. Okay. So that's how, that's how I'm going to grab their attention. Okay. Are you ready for a vacation? What? A, so I start, I start with my hook. So now the next part of my thing is now going to be sharing in experience. Okay. One of the things I've struggled with over the years is going on vacation. Because I always felt like I was leaving my babies behind my little boy and my business. So I would just not go because it would stress me. However, what I have come to find out is it was more needed than I was needed being at home. Okay. I needed to break away from the monotonous, I spell monotonous, from the daily routine. I needed, if I said I wanted to have a life that was full of time freedom, then how am I going to do that if I'm not actually doing it? Going on a vacation taught me how to get more done in a shorter period of time. And it helps me automate things. This could almost be a virtual assistant post, don't you think, Jacqueline? <laughs> yeah. Right? So you could, you could almost steal the same content from me, and we'll talk about that. Okay. Anyways, I can talk about that forever. So I'll talk about the experience. My takeaway is um, that's what I love about our trips, our retreats. We have fun, disconnect, take care of phone calls if we need. However, we enjoy exploring the world. These are by far my favorite trips. They really are. Getting your best 20, 30 friends that have businesses together. It's a really fun time. 
So now I go to chat GPT. Okay. And now I can start to do this. Okay, so now I pull that into my post. Where's my post? Okay. So now I can start to do put whatever I want in those. Okay. And so let's say I want it the shorter. I was like, no, let's start that post is starting to get a little bit long. Say that same thing in bullet points and shorter. Did it not? That was weird. You got to scroll down. Did it not? Right there. You had it. Right here? No. no. Right in the Facebook one. Yep. And then right there. Share here. Key points. Business retreats are boring. Not boring. Okay. So here. Here's a, here's a good one. Yeah. <clears throat> Should I just take it? Put it in there. Okay. And I could probably do more <laughs> if I wanted. Business retreats are not boring. I love it. <laughs> These are not boring. <laughs> the so now I said these so now I go up and add my personality. These bullets are but fun effect ways to prove your comp prove your I don't like companies performance connections. Okay, so I started playing with that. Now, so I got, so let's go back. So I got my hook. Okay, I got my story. Then the third one is my data point. So this is where you want to enter your post. Okay, and this is like a longer post. So I, I always encourage like get one really good long post each week. Like I do believe in like at least some blog like type thing but use it more for social media. So now I got the hook and I got the story. I got my data points. Zach, how come this pops up? Do I just need to go here and keep showing that uh, gray? Can you hear me, Zach? Yep, I was talking, I was muted. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so when you paste it, you need to do like a paste it just as the text. So you could copy that and then like you can copy that same thing that you have. Okay. So copy. copy it. And then when you go to paste it, right? So go back here. <clears throat> you can paste it as uh form, like format. So do nope. So just right click. So right click. Yep. Paste, paste without formatting. Paste without formatting. There we go. Oh no, well. Okay. And, and then, then I would make sure. Yeah, make sure you highlight the whole thing too and make sure that it's at the font you want as well. Yep, and then you can highlight just those three and you can bullet point those two. You can just select those and then just go to, see where uh, at the top, uh, right, 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 right there. Bullet point, okay. yep. Okay, I don't know if I want them bullet pointed. Yeah, yeah, you can take it off. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so then I just start to add it. Okay, so I got my hook, I got my story or my experience, so the emotion, okay, and then I lead into the data points. Sometimes your data points might be longer than the emotion. Sometimes it literally might be, here's my experience, it might be two to three sentences, and then you go into it. So you got your data points, and now you go into the fourth one, which is your offer. And sometimes you're not making an offer. Right. But I would have at least one good, strong offer like two or three times a month, maybe even weekly. Right. I don't think people <clears throat> make enough strong offers on social media. So, offer is if you are 
I offer, I would start with a question. Are you interested in coming? If you are, go to the link below and fill out a form. These will go fast. Okay. If you can't make it, okay. Dates are dates are September second through the ninth. We will be going on a Mexican cruise. Now put all details are in the link. If you are interested in coming, go to the link below and fill the form. These will go fast. If you can't make it, then we will have other dates coming up in November. What dates would work for you? So now I'm starting to create conversation, okay? King is content, queen is conversation, and my wife reminds me of the lady runs the house, okay? Conversation is critical to have on your social media post, okay? So now I got all that, we'll delete out that, okay? And then I might put a hashtag to it. In Facebook groups, your hashtags go all under one category. So you can create video series, all, all, and I'll show you that here in just a second. It's actually really cool what uh, Facebook can do. So next gen business retreat. Okay. So I copy that and go over to Facebook. Where's my other one? So I go over to Facebook. And so now I go to the inner circle is probably where I'm going to offer it. Okay. So inner circle is just for people that have paid to come to events and clients. Okay. So they're probably some of our most closest people. So now I go here and then I paste it. Okay. And then sometimes I just look at that okay and i might make some funer few adjustments here okay i like to add spaces so i'll go enter dot enter dot create space sometimes when it's all chunked together sometimes it, it's not easy to read on the eyes okay no information in the world when read, if it's bad on your eyes, are you going to have a hard, easier time reading it? When we, at our events, we had the problem of people experiencing ear fatigue. So what does it matter what I'm saying if people are getting ear fatigue, right? So how you deliver, again, going back to what I was saying, that information is going to be important. So now then I go to... Um, I want to go and download. So now this is where automation becomes super important. Okay. So now I go back to my drive where everything is held. Okay. And making sure I have doubles. So I go back to the video I want. Okay. And see how everything is so detailed. Okay. Testimonials, all next gen demo videos, event folder. So it's under event folder, Cancun. Okay, trip highlight reel. Okay, download. <coughs> okay. And then essentially that's what I'm attaching to it, the Cancun highlight reel. And then now I go over here to schedule. So I'm gonna schedule it. We'll probably know more by the 28th. Plus, we'll probably have something up by then. So I'll go 28th and I want it dropping 
probably in the afternoon when people get in ready for lunch schedule. Okay. And so this is, this is what I do for, and I'll knock out five, seven posts in literally half an hour. But if you only gave me seven minutes, you're like, Travis, you got seven minutes. You got to get shit done. I was like, oh shit. All right. Where do we go? All right. I only got seven minutes. Type out the best sport brand quotes and leadership quotes. So I just type it in. I don't even know what I'm saying, but I'm putting out something there. Okay. Write these out as separate posts. We'll stop generating. Okay. Right out. And why it's thinking, I'm typing on the something else. I just, I want to have a conversation here. Does that make sense? Right out for historical quotes on leadership. Okay. So if I'm someone like uh, Raynell, write out five different pieces of content on oils and the different health benefits. So now I come in here, okay, copy it, go to my Facebook group, and then I get it posted. Wing. Okay. Could add language around it, could not add language around it. Great lose about being isn't just about being in charge. That never works. And then I might add a quote at the bottom, right off the top of my head. The strength of the wolf is the wolf pack. Okay, and then I'll go here, I'll schedule it. Boom, 645, and then I just repeat the process. So I go back here, okay, to chat GPT, where is it at? Got way too many windows up here. Oh, it's under here, okay. So I go back here and do the same thing. Copy. Good illusion about tell, oh, that, I thought that other one copied, didn't it? I already did that one. Copy, paste. I'm going to change the word empower. That doesn't fit my brand. Inspire does. Okay. And then I might even quickly have photos, photos. You should always be taking photos. So I come in here. Okay. And uh, I'm going to do a picture with my wife. Go here, schedule it. Okay. So Jacqueline, so here's a thought for you, Jacqueline, you, someone pays you to run their Facebook groups for them. So you take their brand and essentially you start saying, hey, for X amount, I'll manage your Facebook group to help you develop referrals. 
right? Okay. Um, any questions about that so far? And then until we go into a few other strategies and then we'll wrap everything up. Any questions? Madeline, what did you like about that or not like? What was your overall thoughts? Um, I really like it because, and I also like that um, you can do it on your phone too, because for me, trying to create content right now is really a struggle with a little one who doesn't want to be put down. So something that can help me speed things up a little bit, but also I can do it whether I'm on my computer or my phone, like this, this is getting me excited because I've been struggling lately. <laughs> And I actually was, I was typing something up today on your behalf. I was thinking about you. So that's so funny. You showed up. Um, I was typing how many people are single. Okay. How many people identify as homosexual? How many people identify straight? So now we start to now, if you're my mentor, Elliot Hulse, he is going to, he talks a lot about femininity and masculinity, yin and yang. Right. And so now he has some stats to go along with some of the emotional points that he's making. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm, yeah. So you can use it. And again, treat it. The, my advice to you is treat it as a little kid, ask it questions. Hey, can you do it this way? Do it that way. And you're going to learn how to communicate with it right now. Again, you're just, you're learning how to communicate with a little robot. And that's kind of weird. <laughs> like, you know, there's this uh, scene in iRobot where, uh, have you guys seen iRobot? Yep. Such a good movie. Um, but the lady that is for, at first, like giving Will Smith a lot of problems because she's like, these robots cannot break the three laws, right? And so she starts helping him because he realized that, hey, there is something up with this robot. And she walks into this other room and she's trying to get the stereo to start. And she goes, play begin and she just sits there and she's trying to figure it out and then all of a sudden it blasts its music right and so it's like she's not like according to the movie that's not what she grew up learning right so she doesn't know how to effectively communicate with that piece of material right and everything's the same thing we was talking to alan about this the other day on social media you know is like if you grew up in a world where you had to sit in a room and just communicate with people through a computer and that's all you ever had and now you had to go out in the real world you would have to teach that human being all sorts of things about how to communicate in a new way like what are some things you think you'd have to teach them like some people are going to like rolling your eyes what does rolling your eyes mean like you're going to have to teach that human being how to communicate in a different way online is the same thing Okay, you're just learning how to communicate with it. And I would treat it as a child and asking lots of questions and then making sure you're using it in a way that allows you to scale, right? And so we talked about the importance of having all your folders on the back end, okay, and organizing everything. So I got my marketing right here, okay? So Black Friday posts, building your Facebook posts, graphics, logos, post so i go to travis's post so this is what i'm focusing more on you're not sharing right now sharing, yeah. oh i'm not sharing thanks <laughs> let me know. that was embarrassing okay <laughs> um, so again everything's broken down so i got everything down here on my back end so if i'm doing posts the rule is never do one post for one platform when you just do a post for facebook and you don't use that for anything else that's such a waste of your time like stop, stop wasting your time. If you're going to do something like get the most out of it that you possibly can. This was my ideology with uh, meal prepping when I was in single. I was like, I don't want to cook every night. Cooking every night's a waste of time. So I would cook Monday night, but I would cook foods Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So I only had to cook once a week, right? I was being efficient. And so you need to be efficient with it in order to be efficient is literally just practicing through it and making sure you're organizing. So I got my post here. Um, okay. And so I just did my business retreat. And so I'm creating posts. And then as I'm doing the post too, I want to be making sure I'm distributing that. Okay. When I do a video reel, it's not just for Instagram, it's for Facebook, it's for YouTube. Okay. 
And then I'm saving all those video reels on my back end because now if I want to reuse those at any point in time, or let's say a new platform pops up, which what's the likelihood that a big, big social media app's going to pop up in the next five years? What's the likelihood of that? I mean, it's almost a guarantee. Pretty likely, yeah. It's almost a guarantee. And if it has similar things, now we already have the content. Now we just have to pay a virtual assistant to start posting. And the greatest mistake you'll ever make in your business, regardless whether I tell you this or not, is you'll wish you would have started scaling systems faster. Okay, that's that's always one of the greatest mistakes of business owners. I wish I would have done some of this stuff faster and not wait till I'm two to three years into the ordeal to start organizing this stuff. Because it's about getting technology going in a momentum way. And so a lot of you guys are fighting technology. A lot of you guys hate technology. Um, a lot of you guys are still kind of, yeah, you're just kind of staying away from it. And I would say, get into it. You don't need to know it the way that Zach knows it. Okay, I don't know any of that stuff. All I know is I know the macro view. Okay. And Zach is a magician, okay? The magicians are the analyticals, the ABCs, the one, two, threes, okay? The kings and queens were the grand visionaries. And at the end of the day, it wasn't really Steve Jobs that built Apple, okay? He was a huge part of it, but his other big partner, which you haven't heard of, is called Steve, what, Steve Wozniak? Wozniak, Wozniak. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that right? And he was much part, well, why don't you hear about him is because, well, he wasn't the visionary. That was Steve Jobs. He was the, he was the king magician and Steve was the king king. However, what made Steve Jobs so good is not only could he communicate this to the world, but he could also communicate it to his tech people. And he bridged the gap between the two worlds. And at the end of the day, I think we're all bridges in some way or another. We bridge two peoples. And so that's what a good king does is they understand the macro and they understand it just enough to have that intelligent conversation with them. Okay. Otherwise, what happens is you start hiring idiots and you start getting people that are just, they're just newer on their journey, not to call them idiots. They're just newer on their journey. Right. And so now you understand who you need to hire in your business. Like I can have a 10 minute conversation with Zach and not know much what Zach does, but have an intelligent enough conversation to know that Zach knows his shit. Right. And so you need to be able to have those conversations and what Will Smith said in his book, if you need a good book to read that teaches you the power of storytelling and how in the art of power of storytelling, it's Will Smith's biography. That is an amazing book. I list, I think you have to listen to it. Some books you need to read, like Expert Secrets, Alan. Mm -hmm. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Other books you need to listen to. Um, but one thing he talked about in his book is he said, you know, me and DJ Jazzy Jeff, he was the magician of them all, the, the scratcher. He said, we'd go into the studio and I'd be like, bow, chicka, bow. And he'd be like, oh, let's do bow, chicka, bow, chicka, bow, bow. And then we would just build our beats and our thoughts and our ideas on top of each other. And these are what comedians do. Kevin Hart sits in a room with some of his backup comedians and he tells jokes and he says, hey, what about telling the joke this way? And so there's conversations at every single one of those levels. And so when you understand the macro view, you're going to be able to take ideas and grow them much faster. Okay. At the end of the day, you're always going to be the brander and you're always going to be the marketer. And really where everything starts is it starts with the macro of the brand. So, and that's why everything I led into today is led into the branding because it really is that important. Everything filters through the brand. So when we're struggling with processes or organizing processes, it's usually because there's, you're not organized in your brand. So now you start taking longer time to do things like this. And so we have the branding and business workshop coming up March 3rd and 4th. We're doing exclusive one right in my house. Um, we'll provide lunch both days, but we're really going into the macro of everything and breaking this down. Um, I know that's short notice for this event. We do have a marketing events coming up in May, um, but check out some of our events that are coming up. 
Okay. You'll, you'll definitely want to attend them. I tell clients that have been in the program for years. I was like, you still like, there's still things you need to learn from these events. You need to come. And they're just going over foundational things. And sometimes you can't see what you need to see because the problem you're looking at is like right in front of you. <laughs> but after you see this problem and overcome it, there's this other problem. But guess what? This other problem is what's keeping you from success. This one's not. But this is the one you're looking at right now. And so sometimes we just have blinders on certain things because that's not really where our experiences have led us at this point in time. So as you grow in your experiences, you start seeing things from a different level. And, and so that's why I encourage people to come to it. And if the only reason for coming to the event was to get to meet people like Jamie and Christy and Tracy and Madeline and Zach and Minky, like that's the only reason why, if that was the only reason, that'd be a reason to sell. There's some amazing people you'll want to talk to, you'll want to connect with. So again, next one's March 3rd and 4th. Alan, I know you weren't able to make that one. Jamie, are you coming to that one? Which next one are you coming to? Um, I can't come to that one. I need to look at the schedule and see where we're at. Okay. So yeah, I know it's kind of short weeks notice and it's in Arizona. We'll be doing something in Utah as well. Um, but that's some of my finishing thoughts is just remember all comes back down to your brand and your brand is you. And so it's about getting more of you, but as the more you explore you and all those different concepts, it allows you to put all those things out there. Okay. Any questions before we wrap things up? I just want to say thank you. Um, I've been having fun with this, asking it to, you know, say things with more humor or as a yogi or, you know, different things like that. And it's just been, it's been awesome. So I'm really excited to incorporate this. Thanks so much. Yeah. I have a funny, I have a funny magician moment, Zach. <laughs> there's, there's these times where I tell someone something like I was in the grocery store the other day and someone just right in front of me just took my cart and started, stopped walking. And I was just so dumbfounded. I just kind of sat there for a second. I'm like, did they really just do that? And I'm like, you took my, you took, I was like, that was mine. Excuse me. That was mine. <laughs> oh. And like, sometimes I say something to somebody and they just look at me and I'm like, do I really have to repeat what I just said? <laughs> so, this happened in softball. It's like, dude, you need to play catcher. And I was like, dude, I just blew up my hamstring. I can't play catcher. Mm -hmm. And then he presides to tell me you're playing catcher. And I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I just told, like, I just told you I can't play catcher. And so again, that's a logical brain right there. Right. And so realizing going back to what Christy said, yeah, add some of your flavor in it, add more emotion, say, say it in a more humorous way. So I like that. Any other takeaways um, or questions? I know we kind of briefly talked about it itself. I wanted to cover, like I was saying, the overall picture and not just one micro tactic. No, happy overall. Okay. Zach, anything you want to end with? Uh, no, I mean, honestly, just play with it. I mean, and the more like you played with it, you've taught me things with it. Like it's crazy. It's 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 super powerful. I think just messing with it and just get, playing with it, and asking it really like simple or dumb questions. Like just you know really play with it and just see what see what it does. Because I mean the way you've asked them, asked questions like it, it gave me ideas to ask it a different way. Because I I mean I've been asking it very like specific questions and very like I don't know. I guess <laughs> like yeah, my I type of asking, question. Uh, and like yeah. you were like bluntly and I'm like, oh dang, I like that. Yeah. Um yeah, get get creative with it. Sell it to say in Trump's voice, right? Yeah. You need to build a wall. All right. You need to be 10 feet taller. Right. Um that's one I've heard people use before, humorous. I really like that. So yeah, just add add your brand into it. I use the word next gen. Uh you like use it for um, historical data, it quoted, um, it, it did a lot of research, like here's the studies. Yeah. I, let me show you this real quick. Conscious versus unconscious. And it started to, oh, maybe I don't have it. 
anyways, it started to cite all these studies that would back up the information. I was like, oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, so it's, it. it's gonna it's gonna do a lot. It can do a lot for you. It's one of those things where just like anything, just like you jump on it after it's kind of matured, you know, it's really hard to communicate with it. And so I feel like this is something that's going to be worth your magician time to put more emphasis in. Yeah. So I agree. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks for joining today, guys. If you guys have any other questions, specific questions, I'll be, I'll stay on here till the end. Uh, but other than that, thanks for jumping on. Thank you. All right. Hey, thanks. Thank you. Hey, yeah. guys. I guess I do have a little more specific uh, question. What you would mainly use it for? Is that just for the content creation? Is that... Um... I'm going to use it for anything I have to type. Like... I, I just wrote my first version of my book. Actually, I didn't write it. I spoke it. And now I'm going back through and typing it because the way I speak is different than how I type. And sometimes it didn't interpret the way I wanted it to interpret. Um, but what I'm thinking is I might use this for different little sections of the book. Or, right. yeah. to, cite, or to cite some sources. I do want to check on those sources, though. That's the thing that I will hire out. But if it can look for sources for me right from the get-go, that saves the person that I'm going to have a lot of time, if that makes sense. So you could use it for that. Blog posts, posts on social media, website copy. I'm going to use this for website copy. Um, a book I would highly recommend. I'm glad you guys all stayed on. This is the only book that sits next to me. Okay. Out of all the books I have, this is the one that I access the most and sits next to me. You guys ready for this? Copywriting secrets. It's a good one. It breaks down so many different aspects of copy. So copy is posts, blogs, anything, anything written. Okay. This kind of shows you how to essentially post your brand and sell through good copywriting. I think everyone should read it. You know, next to expert secrets and marketing secrets, I would def I would definitely put this book in everyone's top ten. Does that answer your question, Nikolai? Um, it does. It does. Okay, Jamie, you had a question. Well, I was just gonna say I really like how this, like, I don't do so. I feel like I'm very behind in my like business area because a lot of uh, direct sales people do a lot of posts and they do a lot of the blog posts and stuff. And I'm, I don't feel like I speak well. I don't feel, I feel like I know what I want to say, but I have a hard time like processing it through. And so I don't do a lot of it because I don't want to look dumb, but I feel like this is like, I've been playing with it and it is incredible. And I am so excited to start implementing this in what I'm doing because it's really going to help and work harder, not smarter or work smarter, not harder. <laughs> Yeah. And, and to even go on one on top of that, working not just smarter, but working more strategically. Right. And so, yeah, absolutely. And I think too, I think, I think this is what will happen. I'm going to sound like Gary V for a second. <laughs> what will happen okay, is I love it, Gary v. Jump on it. They'll immediately jump on it and they'll be like, this is too hard. This, this isn't easy. And it might be a little bit difficult to get started just like anything is, but it'll leave you behind real fast. If you're not staying right on top of it, you won't know the capabilities of it. So like I was saying, I think it's worth everybody to start learning. I mean, when people say like, Oh, technology is going to ruin all these jobs. I was like, but the low end jobs, you want to know how many like rich jobs this is going to create. I could be, mm -hmm. I could brand myself as a chat GPT expert, I integrate conversations in your business without you being evolved. That helps you get sales. There's the pitch like that's easily. And so what I've kind of seen people do in business over the years is they start building their business, but as they're building the business, they notice that a big part of building <clears throat> their business was because of this. It wasn't really because they were good at building business. And so they go in and they start specializing in those little small areas. Like one of my friends, he was doing life coaching 
he got a lot of clients through his podcast. So then he started to get into podcast coaching, right? That's technology. So I think there's going to be a lot of opportunities for technology um, in the future. If you know how to automate stuff like that too, like thinking long-term, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No, so, this is awesome. I'm super excited about this. Tracy, uh, what question? <laughs> Mine's a little off the wall, but um, I want to buy stock in some of this stuff. I was wondering what you would recommend. Hmm. I like to stay in my lane and that's out of my lane. <laughs> <laughs> so the one think, that you're using? I think it's, uh, um, I, don't, I don't know that. I mean, that's a good idea. I mean, I don't see it going anywhere but up at this point. Well, in as time. far as what you know, you, you exactly like it. Yeah. I mean, I, I really like it. I would talk to, I think Frank might be a good guy or someone else you trust, throw it out the social media. I don't know. That's a, that's a good idea. I, I don't do a lot of that stuff. I think the only thing I've invested in other than my business and real estate has been Bitcoin. Um, and that sucked recently. So I'm sitting <laughs> tight <laughs> with that one. Um, but yeah, let me know what, let me know what you find out. Okay. And yes, thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. And I need it horribly. I feel like Jamie a little bit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I need it too. We all need it. It's a, it's a really good tool and it's going to grow fast. Awesome. Thank you. Christy, what questions did you have? Um, so there's other ones besides this chat GPT. There's other ones or I believe there is. Um, I downloaded, uh, I think, two or three different ones on my phone. And um, Genie was one of them. And I even paid for the upgrade and I still didn't even like it. Um, so the chat GPT has been the one I've used so far. They've made it pretty simple, okay. which was really smart on their end. They made it almost too simplistic. I don't know. So I noticed in the beginning that said it said it was like free because they're like testing it out. So do you know anything about it starting to charge or when it yeah. will? Or and they are starting to charge. So it's twenty dollars per month. Okay. So I guess uh, available. Yeah. So it says fast response speed, prior access to new features available when demand is high. So if demand uh, is low, then it will allow you to do it if it's not. Cause I guess they were having bugs because everyone was trying to log into it at the same time. So perfect branding. I mean, perfect branding and marketing too. They offered it for free. They got everyone in the door and then they said, Hey, here's the paid version They're Yeah. I mean, they're billionaires. I mean, because of it, cause well, they're able to do something like that. So excited. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And, you know, thinking about you and where you're at, Chrissy, you could maybe use it for one of your metaphorical messages at the end, um, you know, a history story. So stuff like that. So for me, how I'm going to utilize it is just like I was saying, just start typing up stuff. And as I'm typing up stuff, just make sure I'm producing at the same time and working it as I keep going. I just found the mobile app fee is Nineteen ninety nine for the year. Oh, is it the year? Yeah, the mobile app, the one for your phone. I thought it was nineteen dollars a month off the. That's for the desktop portion, but I'm looking at the um, yearly subscription. Let's see if it shows that. Mm, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, I can't see it. Um... Can't see it. The mobile, the yearly subscription on you for your. So your phone, it says nineteen ninety nine a year. Huh, mine says nineteen a month. I, I know for the desktop. I looked at desktop pro version. It's nineteen a month. Yeah. Maybe they just testing. I guess I'm a sucker. <laughs> no, on, on the desktop version, it shows the same thing. If I want to upgrade, it's uh twenty dollars a month. But I was looking at the mobile because the young Madeline, I think it was, said she had it on her on her phone. So I looked that up. There's a subscription charge charge for your mobile. Okay, yeah, screenshot that and send that to me if you don't mind. Okay. Um, hey, thank you, Travis. Yeah, appreciate it, guys. Any other questions?
Nope, that's it. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks guys. guys. Have a good one.